Hello and welcome to this Edexcel GCSE Geography Walking Talking Mock on Coast. And these are designed to improve your confidence in reading and interpreting the exam questions so you can do the best you possibly can. First of all, please just pause the video um, and just make notes on how to use this video. This will make sure that you are using it to its best and hopefully will give you the best chances of success in the future. So pause now. So this video continues on with the UK changing landscape section and it's important to realise in the exam that once you've done the short first section you are only required to answer two out of three possible questions. Now because we've studied coastal landscapes and river landscapes you will only need to do questions two and three. You do not do question four. What's also important is read all of the information because as it says here if you answer question two, put a cross in this box. It is very important that in your exam you put a cross in this box here. Okay, so on with the questions. Coastal landscapes are constantly being changed by different processes. There's the background to the question. Study figure one in the resource booklet. Now, I would advise that you straight away go to figure one. So if we have a look at figure one, here we can see a coastal landscape. Now, before even looking at the question, just work out the kind of things that you can see here. We can see we've got a coastline, which looks like it's made of chalk because of the white um, cliffs. We can see we've got evidence of the mass movement of the rocks at the bottom here. We've got evidence of erosion leading to these stacks. Uh, we've got these small bays forming in here, so differential erosion. We've got evidence of deposition here in these small beaches as well. So let's go back to the question and see what we've got to do. It says, identify one erosional landform shown in the landscape in figure one. So identify a very basic, simple answer. One, just one feature. And it's got to be a feature that's created by erosion. And it's got to be something that you can see in the figure. So don't just mention any old erosional landform. It's got to be something that you can see in the figure. It's only worth one mark. So it should take you less than a minute. So have a go now. The next question, again, is a very simple one. State one type of biological weathering that might have an impact on this landscape. State just need one word or a very short statement and it's just one type but it has to be related to biological weathering okay so it can't be mechanical it can't be chemical it can't be mass movement it has to be about biological weathering it's only worth one mark so it should be another short one so have a go now the next question then Riprap is an example of hard engineering. Explain one way riprap helps to protect coastal landscapes. So here we've got an explain question. We've got to give reasons how or why. We need to be using connectives like this means that, this leads to, this causes, so. And we have to give just one way in which riprap helps to protect the coastal landscape. So the best way to approach this, we've got two marks, two minutes, say what riprap is and then say how it helps to protect the coastline. So describe what it is, big rocks, gaps in the rock, how does it help to protect the coastal landscape, absorbs wave energy, reflects waves energy, stops the waves hitting the coast. So have a go now. So let's have a look at the answers for those shorter questions. So you can see here for a state or identify, one word answers are more than enough here and you can see the whole range of different things that you can see but notice in the mark scheme it says reject depositional features so one mark and it may be worth just writing some of the other features um, that you could have written as well if we look at the next one again another state so award one mark for one of the following so it might be about root action it might be about the influence of acids in the soil, or it might be the action of animals such as rabbits burrowing in there. One mark, 
really simple thing to do but it's got to make sure that it relates to biological weathering not chemical or mechanical or erosion finally then we look at this one before moving on to the longer question and it says award one mark for a point about riprap and a further mark for saying how it protects the coastal landscape so large boulders placed along the cliff line which protect the coast by acting as a sea wall or they dissipate wave energy so really, really simple and straightforward there. Both the rivers and the coast questions, we're going to get a longer question, an eight mark question, which looks at examine. So let's go through step by step. It says here, study figure two. Okay, so first of all, we look at figure two. And what do we see? Well, we can see we have this landform here. And it's been clearly labelled with spit, salt marsh, headland, river mouth, fastest flow, movement of sediment, wind direction. We can see we've got a north arrow here, so we wouldn't know which direction it is. And we've also got a scale on here as well. So we've got a spit and all of these other features. So as we look through, the question is, examine how physical processes work together in the formation of the spit formed. So you've got to think about what all of the different processes are. To examine, that means that you need to explain, but also give evidence from the resource that it's asked you to look at. And then we'll go through that in more detail. Before we move on, though, it's very important to look at how these are marked. These are not marked in the same way as the shorter questions. These are leveled marks. And to get the best marks, what you need to be doing is looking to show that you understand the processes that are involved. You've looked at the physical processes that are there. And also, you've used your geographical skills to get information from the resource and put them in there. You don't need to include all of the information, but you need to demonstrate that you can make these logical connections uh, between the theory and what you can see in front of you through here. So when we look at this resource, what can we see? Well, we know we've got a wind direction here and the wind is coming from the southwest. This means that we've got movement of sediment. Now the movement of sediment is likely to be caused by longshore drift as the swash washes the material up the beach and the backwash brings it back down in the zigzag pattern all along the coastline. Here we've got the headland, a change of direction of the coast. So the material is being transported along the coast, but when it reaches this headland, this area is slightly more sheltered. Because the waves have less energy, there's more likely to be deposition occurring. And so the largest settlement drops first, and then you get more sediment building on until it breaches sea level. Now, as this area behind it, or this area to the north of the spit, is even more sheltered, means any sediment traveling down the river that flows into this area will also be deposited, forming this salt marsh. We have the river flowing from the north to the south, and this means because of the flow here, it's preventing the spit reaching the other side of land. The other bit of information we can get here is using this scale here, is we can see that this spit is around 12, 13 kilometers long. To sum all of that up then, this is the information you would need to include in your answer. We can see we've got all of the different things that we've talked about. So we have the understanding, so if it was explain a spit, this is the information that you would use here. And then this is the information that we've gained from the resource to help us examine it. It's using our geographical understanding and our application and geographical skills. So here is the question again, examine using explanation. So using connectives, this means that, this leads to, this causes, this creates the physical processes, the transportation, the deposition, and how they work together in the formation of the spit shown. So giving the evidence that we've seen before. It's eight marks. You're probably gonna have about 10 minutes to write this answer. Have a go now before we go through the answers. So here we can see the information in the mark scheme and it's got here for AO3 all of the different physical processes. Now you would not be expected to include all of this. 
but you would need to make sure that your explanation is coherent and complete so it shows your understanding of the formation of the spits and the salt marsh. Now, although, as we saw in the, one of the previous slides in here, the AO4 is separate, it is really important that you actually put this information here and you fit it within your explanation. You shouldn't have two different sections. You need to make sure that this is embedded into your main bit. So have a read through yours, see how it fits. Does it flow? Could you put the information from AO4 and link it into the right and correct place for AO3? Because that would be very important when we come to look at the overall mark scheme. Are you looking and using the correct information and providing logical connections? Is it a well-developed answer? Is it coherent? Does it make sense? And have you used evidence throughout it? And the evidence would come from these geographical skills. So I hope this has been of use. Many thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.